In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. A very warm welcome to St Mary's the University Church, and particularly to those of you who may be visiting us today. It's a real delight to be with you as we join together to worship. We are come together to greet the risen Christ. As the risen Christ comes to us in the scriptures unfolded, in the bread and the wine broken and shared, and in and through one another. And mindful of that, we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our, our Heavenly Father, Father we, we have sinned, sinned against, against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
As we stand, we pray. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met, were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, 
they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've made it through Holy Week. Christ is risen. We've broken our Alleluia fast, and we've all had a few days of celebrating the new and eternal life we've been given by eating too much chocolate, just as Christ intended. We've wished each other Happy Easter, and the determined among us will continue to do so until at least the ascension. But what's changed? I mean, really, what's changed in your world this Easter? On one level, while we might feel full of the joys of spring, or not, as the case may be, on another, we've still had to put the washing on, tackle the emails, and put the bin out this week. Not exactly the resurrection life I was hoping for. As Christians, we live in this constant juxtaposition of knowing that because of God's all-giving love in Jesus, we are forgiven, loved, and free. And as a result, we can live with a sense of the eternal which has been opened to us through God's abundant grace. But we also turn on the news and see people being as awful to one another as they always have been. And on a more individual level, we continue to fall into the same old traps and patterns ourselves too. We live in this weird in-between place, and sometimes we wonder, so what has really changed since Easter Day? What good did the resurrection do if there's still sin in the world, and at least a notable proportion of our daily life can at times be mind-numbingly dull? Isn't there supposed to be more to life than this? Aren't we supposed to be so inflamed with the passion for the gospel that we shout it from the rooftops and dance in the streets? If anybody feels moved to do so, don't let me stop you. But isn't the world supposed to be different now? Isn't everything supposed to be better, if not perfect? Christ is risen. Aren't we all supposed to live happily ever after, like they did in the early church, where everyone got on well and shared all their things and lived together as one big happy family? The reading that we heard from Acts this morning certainly sounds idyllic, doesn't it? 
Everyone shared everything in common. No one was left in need, and they all lived happily ever after until they had their first dispute and people had different opinions about what constituted a real Christian. And the Apostle Paul, among others, had to step in and say, play nicely now, children, on more than one occasion. As Rowan Williams reassuringly reminded us at the Bampton Lectures, we only have much of the New Testament and certainly the letters of Paul because no one could agree on anything. The world has changed, but maybe we haven't. Maybe the resurrection changed everything, but it didn't impose that change. So maybe the resurrection is an invitation to God's new life in God's kingdom, not a set of new rules that everybody must follow or else. And this is the thing. If resurrection is an invitation to new life in Christ, and we are to understand what the joy of Easter really means, then first we must know what kind of kingdom we're being invited into and how it works. The kingdom of God was among us when Jesus walked the earth, but it was far too radical for our liking. It was far too loving for our sensibilities, and it demanded far too much of us to be palatable to most. In fact, it tended to be those with least to lose in the world's eyes who got on board with it, because the cost of the kingdom was too high for those with money and status and power and social order to protect, unless they realized that without those things, they were just like everyone else, poor and in need of love. The kingdom of God was a threat to our hierarchies and systems because it refused to be subject to them. But it took its lead from a higher power and it could give to Caesar what was Caesar's because it had no eternal value. But Jesus gave to God his all so that we could be with him in paradise. The kingdom of God came as an ordinary looking man with an ordinary looking face who went to the loo and ate and felt the cold and took the bus and put the bins out like the rest of us. The kingdom of God was among us and he showed us some extraordinary things, but he wasn't quite as glamorous as we expected him to be. Much, I suggest, like the second Sunday of Easter is not as glamorous and full of unbridled joy as we might think it should be if Christ really did rise from the dead just last week. But maybe this is exactly where the kingdom is now, in the mundane, in the ordinary, in the unglamorous monotony of life, in the relationships that are going okay but aren't great, in the situations that need attention and working out, in the institutions that need reforming, in the hearts that need mending, in the communities that are grieving, in the people that are broken like you and I are, who need healing and redeeming and guiding as we navigate this turbulent passage through time. That's where Christ spent his time on earth, and that's where we continue to find the quiet growth of the kingdom today, where people quietly volunteer in charity shops and food banks, where peace negotiations happen around ordinary tables, where friends bring comfort in others' grief and strangers share their food, where children are rescued from dinghies and counselors help broken hearts to find the courage to try again. The kingdom isn't glamorous and the work of the kingdom is not always full of unbridled joy. In fact, for much of it, we won't see the fruit of it in our lifetime. But it is because of Easter Day that we know that the kingdom will come in all its fullness. And we know that happily ever after is a reality, which we will know for ourselves when the kingdom comes to this earth as it is in heaven. This is what Christ won for us on the cross. And this is what he invites us to for all eternity. It is an inevitable reality. 
It is already true. It is awaiting us when we leave this temporal existence and enter into the arms of eternity where sorrow and pain and war shall be no more and there will be peace and justice will reign and the earth will be renewed and we will once more walk hand in hand with the one who created us. But we do ourselves a disservice if we confuse Easter Day the resurrection of Christ from the dead, with the general resurrection on the last day, when we shall know paradise on earth and God's kingdom will come in all its fullness. Because Christ is the first fruits of the new creation. Easter is not the end of the story, it's just the beginning. It's the first day of the rest of our lives, Lives in which we know how the story ends, and we know how our story ends, because we know that love has conquered death. But we've not arrived at the party quite yet. Easter is an invitation, not a destination. And until the kingdom comes, our lives will continue to be full of the mundane and beautiful and tragic and exciting and the ordinary, side by side with the utterly extraordinary work of love which permeates it all. But right now, we have a job to do as we take up our invitation to the new life that we've been given, to invite as many people to join us as we can as we head towards it. And we can get ourselves and the world around us ready by getting quite literally into the spirit of it. Our lives may still feel ordinary most days. And we might feel like we're fighting against a tide of inertia and apathy in institutions and global systems which are slow to move forward and reluctant to change. But if we follow where Christ has trodden, then we know that the path that we travel leads to new life. And if we're looking out for it, we might just notice the world transformed, little by little, day by day, individual by individual as we go. What's really changed? Everything. The world just doesn't know it yet. Amen. We confess our faith through the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father.
and disperse the frictions and ill will that diminish our humanity and damage our relationships with each other and with you. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, we give thanks for the work of your church in this place, in our diocese, our country, and across the world. Help us to recognize our differences, to acknowledge our weaknesses, and to celebrate the gifts we can each bring to the shared task of making the light of Christ grow brighter every day. We pray for our own spiritual needs, and we ask your blessing on all those who seek to know you more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, we pray for governments, aid agencies, and for all those who work to bring relief where injustice, war, <clears throat> and desecration bring blight to lives and livelihoods. As we witness the cruelty that has brought destruction to the lives of people in Gaza, Israel, Ukraine, Sudan, and in too many other places, we join our prayers with those of our sisters and brothers across the world in seeking an end to want and violence and war. We pray for your help in navigating our encounters with the incomprehensible in uniting in the miracle of your creation and in committing ourselves to overcome injustice, prejudice and disunity wherever we may find it. Give us courage to stand up for all who are silenced and the confidence to believe that however small our actions, we can each make a difference. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Caring God, we give you thanks for all those whom we love, for our families, our friends, and our neighbors, for those we see every day, and for those who are further away. In the complexity of personal relationships, give us insight to understand what we can offer to others and how to receive with gratitude what is offered to us. Help us to cherish each other and to live together as Jesus showed that we should live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, we pray for those who are sick, in grief, in want, or in despair. Revive those who are worn down by the complexities of life and strengthen the hands of all who work to care, cure, and console from our own community, we pray for Roz, Maria, Julia, Ambrose, Jenny, Ellen, Elizabeth, Moose, Alice, James, Gemma, Hattie, and Imogen and for others known to us alone. We remember all those who have recently died and those who grieve their loss. We give thanks for those who played a part in our own lives but whom we see no longer. Let us pray for their continuing rest in your enfolding peace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> the risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you. And they were glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. It's it's
and be with you. Peace the Lord be with you. Peace the Lord. Six months ago, a dreadful event happened in the Middle East, and ever since, that violence has continued. In a moment or so, we will receive broken bread and spilt wine. And I invite you, when you come forward and take the broken bread, to remember your own brokenness, but the brokenness of others in the Middle East. And as you take wine and pray for your healing, Pray for healing in our world, and especially in the Middle East. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your loving care, you spread before us the table of life and give us the cup of salvation to drink. Keep us always in the fold of our Saviour and our Shepherd, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal God. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful, of your won wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the power of death and hell and restored in all people the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory.
Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, and as often as you shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come. come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death upon the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. So we, we, are are we are one, one body, body because, because we all share in one bread. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Let us pray. God our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from this death of sin and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Would you please be seated just for a moment? It's been really good to worship with you this morning, and you're all warmly invited to stay for some refreshments over here in the De Broom Chapel after the service. If you're new, it would be lovely if you introduce yourself to a member of the congregation or clergy or anybody that looks friendly. We'd love to get to know you a little bit more. There's a few things coming up, particularly this week. Um, it's a surprisingly busy week for a couple of weeks after Easter. There is Explore Easter at 2 p.m. or from 2 p.m. till 3.30 p.m. on Tuesday the 9th of April. And that's an opportunity for children and adults, those who are young at heart, um, to come and not only hear the story of Easter, but also to take part in it creatively through play and through craft. There'll also be an 18-foot labyrinth if you'd like to come and walk that. So do come along between 2 and and 3.30 on Tuesday. There's no need to book in advance, um, but do come along if you would like to. 
And on the topic of growing our faith among the youngest in our midst, there is an opportunity to join the fabulous team here at the University Church. Um, and you are warmly invited to consider whether you yourself or somebody you know might be a good fit for our next children, families and schools chaplain role. There's more details about this on the website. Um, it's been advertised for a short while, but just to let you know that the closing date is coming up on the 15th of April. If you'd like to hear more about that role, do look at the website, but also get in touch with me and we'd be delighted to share some more details. And please do be praying for the people that are considering for applying to, to apply for that. Next week, there is the first Sunday forum of term, and you're very warmly welcomed to join us in the old library upstairs with Guy Scottici, Scottici, sorry, um, who's the director of the Porch Day Centre here in the city. We've collected for and supported the Porch in a number of different ways over the years, but this is an opportunity to hear a little bit more about their work, particularly how they provide a stepping stone for those who are homeless or vulnerably housed. So do come along to hear more from him 12 p.m. next Sunday on the 14th of April. There's also Latin communion coming up, so do make a note of that date in your diary. And of course, the APCM, which is a date not to be missed on the 28th of April. There is just one more thing, and that is to let you know that the pilgrimage to Lourdes will be taking place towards the end of this week and over next weekend. There is one place left on that pilgrimage, I hear, if you would like to have more details. I think Anna's probably the best person. She's holding up her hand, so I'll direct you to Anna to find out more details about that if you would like um, to fill that place. But please do also be praying for those who are going on the pilgrimage, as I'm sure they will be praying for you. Would you please stand? <laughs> Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. God, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.